Hey there, it's Mr. Thompson with a maths video lesson on the subject of statistics today. And we're looking at a couple of uh, concepts here, measures of spread and box plots. Um, so let's just dive right in here. Okay, first of all, um, to get to find some measures of spread, to get some information on how uh, the data that we're going to be looking at in statistics is spread out, how it spreads and how it's distributed. Um, across the the spectrum of the values that you have we're going to get five values five specific pieces of information from some data um, so the first step um, in doing this is getting those five pieces of information and then we're going to use those in a minute so those five pieces of information are the minimum quartile one median quartile three and maximum three of those you might be fairly familiar with two of them might be new so minimum is your lowest value just the first lowest uh, least smallest value um, that uh, in the data set and the maximum likewise is the largest value uh, median you might be familiar with it's the middle value so whatever's right in the middle of all the data 50% of the way through okay and uh, then there are the quartiles quartile one is the middle of the bottom half of the data so if you take you know the bottom half of the data and you find the median of that, that's quartile one. Likewise, quartile three is the middle of the top half of your data. Okay. Um, once you have, and we'll do an example of, of of finding these in just a minute. Okay. Once you have those though, you can do step two and find the range and the inner quartile range. All right. The range. Uh, you may have uh, done before which is just the maximum minus the minimum or you, you could say the difference between the maximum and the minimum um, and the inner quartile range very similar we do a difference but it's the difference of the quartiles so quartile 3 minus quartile 2 take away uh, sorry quartile 1 that is qu quartile 3 take away quartile 1 as it's written here okay so let's do an example we've got a data set here with some numbers that are going to show up very quickly excellent very good and um, you'll notice that these numbers are ordered already they're already listed from smallest to largest um, so if you're doing this kind of thing by hand um, putting the data in order will help okay if you're using a calculator you can put it in you know if you have a cow's calculator and it'll do this stuff for you great um, you don't necessarily have to put it in order calculator will do that automatically um, but I've got an order and of course the minimum is the first number which is one the maximum is the highest number 13 the median is the halfway point okay now this data set there are I think 14 values there's an even number so if we break it in half um, it splits evenly so there is no one number in the middle so we actually need to find what goes halfway between these two values okay if these two values were the same that's easy it's just that value if it was 8 and then 8 then the answer would be 8 the median would be 8 um, but as it is we have to find what's directly between 7 and 8 um, and so we can do that by averaging them um, you know probably this one's probably an easy example but 7 plus 8 divided by 2 7 and a half which of course is directly between 7 and 8 now the quartiles are a little bit easier because the each half of this data does have odd numbers uh, I have an, has an odd number of uh, values so we can just take the middle of the uh, the bottom half the bottom half here the lower half of the data the middle number is four nice and easy and the middle of the top is ten so that's quartile three now um, great that's our uh, our um, oh well now we want to find the range and the inner quartile range so we take uh, ten sorry 13 take away one for the range and for the um, inner quartile range we'll do 10 take away four which is six all right so uh, there we go those are um, data points which tell us some things about this data um, of course with just random numbers like that we have here we don't have sort of a situation we don't know if this is like points scored or you know uh, widgets sold or test scores or something like that um, we don't know what it is so it's a little bit hard to you know um, make 
uh, statements about what the what these range and in, interquartile range you know what their significance is or what they mean um, they're particularly helpful in comparison comparing um, different data sets and things like that you know is one more spread out than another or is it you know is that much of a spread reasonable is it okay um, and again it all determines and it all it depends on the situation right so right now we're just doing the technical um, ideas of how to find these things, um, eventually you'll want to learn how to interpret them and make sense of them um, in with like word problems, stuff like that. Okay, once you've um, done all this, you can also do a box plot, which is a visual representation of the, um, of the five data points that we um, found at the start. So I'll, uh, the first thing we do with a box plot is we make a number line. And it needs to at least go from the minimum to the maximum. It can do more than that. So this could go from zero to fifteen if you wanted, or something like that. Um, and we're gonna um, we're gonna place all of our our five data points, uh, min, max, median, and quartiles, on this number line with lines up in the space above the number line. Okay. <clears throat> so first, I'm gonna do the median, uh, and of course. Um, you know, that's not directly in the middle of 1 and 13. Um, it's a little bit closer to 13 than it is to 1. Um, and so we want to, you know, represent that on our data. If you're using graph paper, I should have probably been a little more careful about exactly following my dots and stuff. Um, I just kind of chucked it on there. Bit of an estimate. Um, so this is a bit rough. That's fine. If you're wanting to do one really, really well, you'd want to, you know, count out the number of boxes and things like that to be um, precise. But I've just got this nice big line right up here above, and I've marked the the um, that on the number line as 7.5. That's my median. Then I'm going to do the quartiles next. So I'm going from the inside out. So quartile one is at four, and um, that goes on there, and quartile three is at 10, so I've got these three vertical lines up in space above the number line. Now I'm gonna connect those with horizontal lines to make them a box, hence the name box plot. Um, I want to add the max and min though, and that happens with what sometimes get called whiskers, these horizontal lines that go out and show us the whiskers, the, the, mean, uh, the min and the max of the data. Okay, so this is a visual representation, um, and uh, again, you know, with multiple data sets, if you make multiple block box plots, you can just see instantly, ah, okay, this one's different to that one in, in these ways, and so on and so forth. Um, great, now there are some ways to describe box plots. Um, oh, and it is important that this number line, oopsies, is always to um, scale, okay, that we don't, you know, you know, mine was roughly to scale, which is fine. Um, but good to be more precise, but um, we want we don't want the you know lots of space in places where there shouldn't be lots of space and so on and so forth. Um, they're roughly in the right place um, and even better to be more exactly in the right place. Okay, so the words that we can use to describe box plots are uh, the first being symmetrical, which you know same thing on both sides. So the um, you know the median is right in the middle. The space between the median and the quartiles is about the same, and the space, um, you know, the distance out to the min and the max is about the same as well, so symmetrical. Um, negatively skewed is when the data is all particularly to one side, and that is mostly to the uh, closer to the maximum. So if the data, um, you know, we can see that the median is close to the third quartile, and the, that, that third quartile is close to the maximum, whereas the first quartile and the minimum are more spread out. So because those, uh, the spread is closer to the, you know, it's more spread out on the lower side, we call that negatively skewed. Um, that's just the way we do it. Um, so positively skewed is the opposite. The data is mostly um, gathered around the minimum or closer to the minimum. Um, and the spread is up here, uh, whoops, the spread is up here um, near the maximum, right? So the median and quartile one are close, and then that's close to the minimum, and so on and so forth. So get out of the, get out of the way here. Um, the, the data groups closer to the minimum on a positively skewed graph. So it might feel like those are kind of oppositely named, um, but it's you can if you think about it as that the um, the name talks about where the 
biggest spread of data is. Right? All right, box plots, measures of spread. Hope that helps. Um, we'll try to get some examples, maybe where we are doing some interpretation and some comparisons, because um, uh, that's the kind of thing you'll you'll do with these. Um, but if you have any specific examples, we'd love to um, see them in the comments. And I will talk to you next time.